And state, we're in the middle of your work. Yeah. Go ahead. Thank you. Just a couple more questions, uh, Sergeant Parkinson. Now, we, when we left off, we were speaking about a roadside assistance call that you learned existed after the defendant gave you his walkthrough statement. Right? Correct. What I want to do is play for you an excerpt uh, of that roadside assistance call just to make sure that we're talking about the same one. Okay? Yes. Is that the roadside assistance call you were referring to? Yes. Okay. And that break in between what was the third shot and what began the fourth, fifth, and sixth shot, when you indicated a little while ago that it was between 10 and 12 seconds, is that the break that you're talking about that we just listened to? Yes. Okay, cross-examination. Thank you. Good morning, Sergeant. Good morning. I want to talk to you about the experience that you testified to on direct examination in your capacity as a Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office employee. Okay. I believe that you told us that um, you started in 2001, right? Correct. Okay. And you've advanced through the ranks to the point where in uh, 2013 you became a sergeant in the Homicide Bureau. Is that right? Correct. All right. But you actually started in the Homicide Bureau in 2005. 2005 as a detective, Yes, correct. sir. Right. So as part of your duties working in the Homicide Unit, you, invo you investigate uh, homicides, and also officer-involved shootings. Is that correct? Correct. All right. How many officer-involved shootings have you investigated in your entire career at the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office? I would venture to say as part of my duties as a detective and as a sergeant, I either led, assisted, or supervised on probably 20. That's a rough estimate. And so among those 20 officer involved shootings that you have investigated, approximately how many of them did the officer give a walkthrough statement after the incident, whether it's on video or audio? The majority, if not all of them. Okay. And in general, in general, in your experience as a detective investigating 20 or so officer involved shootings, where a police officer in the majority of them, if not all of them, has given a walkthrough. Have you found in your experience that if a person is not accurate about something, that that does not necessarily mean that they are intentionally stating a false fact? Let me give you a slight leeway. Can you answer that? I think only they can answer that. Okay. All right. I'm going to approach the witness, Your Honor. Deposition, January 9th, page. 48 and 49. Sergeant, I'm going to show you your deposition. Do you remember giving a deposition in this case? I do. And um, I want you to take a look at it. Now, a deposition is a sworn statement that is given by witnesses in criminal cases prior to trial in the presence of the lawyers who are handling the case 
in an effort to discover what that witness may say if the case were to actually go to trial. Is that correct? Correct. All right. And when you gave your deposition on January 9th, 2018, um, Mr. Lubin and Mr. King were present, is that correct? Correct. All right. And Mr. Fernandez was present, correct? Correct. And prior to giving your deposition, the court reporter, similar to the court reporter who's seated right in front of you, administered an oath to you to tell the truth. Is that correct? correct? Right. I want to direct your attention to, and have you had an opportunity, sir, to review page 48 and 49 of your deposition? Uh, 48, I have. Okay, if you would turn on to 49, that's sure. where the answer is. And I would... Incur I'll wait for you to finish. <clears throat> okay. And I encourage you, if you would like to, to put it into context, to look before or after at, to your content. Okay? I just want to make sure that you've had an opportunity to review everything. Sure. Okay. Yes. So, on January the... 9th, 2018, do you remember being asked the following question and giving the following answer? <clears throat> and do you think as a seasoned police officer that if a person is not accurate about something, that that necessarily means that they were intentionally stating a false fact and you said no, correct? Yes. And that's been your experience, right? Generally. Okay. Because there are always stress-related factors that are involved in the recounting of an incident, right? I'm sure. You've attended courses that have taught that, right? Yes. Okay. And it's not unusual at all for an involved officer to differ with other witnesses in their recall of the situation, correct? R correct. In general speaking. And tunnel vision may play a role due to the effects of adrenaline, right? Yes. You know what auditory occlusion means? Could you object to this being outside of the, uh, the scope of this witness's uh, knowledge, the honest of what he can testify to? Hang on, hang on. Why don't you come up? Sure. Get your exercise stand. Sergeant. Um, when you did the walkthrough and Mr. Raja was talking about what he saw and he described it as a laser max on the guide rod of handguns. You're familiar with laser max, aren't you? I've never had a laser or seen a laser, I don't think, in my presence. Okay, so you're not familiar with what laser max is? The general about. concept of laser, but not, no. I'm not. Or, or the differences between other lasers and laser max. I'm not educated on that. Okay. One moment, Your Honor. Sure. You're welcome. State, do you have any redirect? Yes, sir. I'll hold you to it. That's a famous lawyer joke. Well, I only have one question. Miss Ellis, you've been fantastic both sides. No problem at all. Just teasing you. Um, Remember when defense counsel asked you, uh, he referred to your deposition? Yes. And um, he had you read the line where the question was asked, and do you think a seasoned police officer that is, that if a person is not accurate about something, that that person is necessarily, means that that person is, means they were intentionally stating a false fact, and your response was no. You recall reading that a few minutes ago? Yes, I do. Now, that question that he, he asked you back in the deposition in this, in this morning, he wasn't referring to the defendant, right? I think just that it was a general question based general on question. experience. And, right. Okay. So this wasn't a question that specifically referred to defendant Raja in this case. Correct. Nothing further, Judge. Thank you. You may step down. Watch your step. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Uh, yes, we're going to grab that depot from you, give it back to the defense, and state call your next witness. Uh, state calls uh, crime scene investigator Thomas. 
Crime Scene Investigator Thomas. And here comes CSI Thomas, am I correct? Yes, sir. Good afternoon, good, well, still morning. Good morning to you and thanks for your patience. If you do me a favor, raise your right hand, face Mr. Clerk for me. Please solemnly swear or affirm that the evidence you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. Great, you're gonna have a seat right up here. Please watch your step. Once you get into the witness stand, the chair swivels and rolls. The most important, and get your, I see you have some items with you, get yourself comfortable and set up and then get that microphone pretty close to your mouth. The whole base moves and it flexes up and down. Get it where you're happy. And then tell us your full name and spell your last name for us. My name is Keith Thomas, T-H-O-M-A-S. And state when you're ready. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Mr. Thomas, where are you currently employed? Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office. Okay, and how long have you been with that agency? Since September of 2002. All right. And since September of 2002, were you always in the crime scene unit? I joined the crime scene unit in 2008. All right. What did you do from 2002 to 2008? Uh, Approximately half of that time I was in corrections, mm -hmm. and then approximately the other half of the time I was an evidence technician. Okay. Now, did you receive any sort of specialized training prior to, well, let's just start, okay, because it sounds like you joined the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office in 2002. Yes, ma'am. Is that right? So, what sort of training did you receive, your background, education and training did you receive prior to starting with Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office? Basic techniques for um, developing fingerprints, um, collecting DNA, um, footwear and tire tread impressions, a uh, lot of training with um, unusual firearms. Um, so you received some training in firearms as well? Yes, ma'am. All right, but you don't, you, you, you receive some training, but you, 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 you aren't assigned to the firearms unit. Correct. I'm not a firearms examiner. No, ma'am. But you're familiar with guns? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you're familiar with lasers? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Go ahead. You um, can continue. Ground penetrating radar, the um, Leica scan station, C10 laser scanner. Okay. Um, a lot of photography training um, with various lighting techniques, um, fluorescence, oblique angles. Um, okay. Now, when you were then promoted uh, into the crime scene unit, did you receive any sort of specialized training to go into the crime scene unit with the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office? The, the training that, I, that I've mentioned, I received prior to entering the unit and continuously. It, it, it's an ongoing, um, I, I'm, I'm always training. Okay, so, you're, so even today, as we speak, you're, 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 you're always training. Yes, ma'am. Your training is ongoing. Correct. I want to talk to you, uh, C.S.I. Thomas, about what you did in this case. And before I get to actually, you know, the meat of what you did, because you did a lot in this case, right? Yes, ma'am. When you, obviously, you are not the only crime scene investigator Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office has. Correct. When you guys are called to a scene, okay, when you get there, is someone designated the crime scene lead investigator? They are. We work that out amongst ourselves, but somebody will, will assume the role of the lead at the very beginning stages. Okay. And, um... When you became involved in this case, were you given des a designation as to what your role would be in this case? It, at the time I was notified, it was just myself and my shift partner, and I took the role of the lead. Okay. Now, did you have some assistance from other crime scene investigators? Yes, ma'am. Some people from the day shift showed up to assist us in the later hours of the processing. 
And can you just briefly tell uh, the members of the jury, what does crime scene uh, do? When you guys go on a scene, what's your purpose for going? To document the scene um, as it is, any, any potential evidence to locate and document and preserve um, and process. Um, part of the preserving is the way it's packaged and submit it to the evidence unit, sometimes for distribution out to other units, such as the firearms unit or the latents unit or forensic biology for DNA. Okay. When you, when you first arrive on a scene, what is your protocol when you first arrive on a scene? I'm not talking about this scene in particular right now, but just your protocol for when you first arrive on a crime scene. I, I determine who, who at the scene knows, knows the most of what's thought to have possibly occurred. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that will be the first responder that arrived there first. Sometimes it will be a detective that arrived ahead of me from BCD. Um, but I find that person and get a basic idea of what area we're looking at and what may have occurred there. Okay. And when you say you get an idea uh, 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 of, of what may have occurred there, what may have occurred there, and you look at the scene, do you immediately go into the scene and start, you know, messing around with casings, uh, you know, picking them up, looking at them, putting them back down? You know, do you immediately just start messing around with some of the stuff that, that's, that's with, within the crime scene perimeter that you guys have established at the time? Outside of exigent circumstances, such as an outdoor scene with rain, um, the normal procedure is to go in and photograph and document things in situ uh, prior to handling of anything. Now, before you, you know, a lot of times what we'll see is we'll see yellow crime scene tape. Yes, ma'am. Which will cord on off an area. All right. Do, do you all put that tape up, or is it somebody, someone else in your agency who will put that crime scene tape up? Usually the, the first responders or somebody responding shortly after them will have established um, some type of perimeter. Okay. And what, what's that for? What, what, why, why, do we, why, you put the, why is the tape being placed around a perimeter? So that um, personnel involved in the case, as well as members of the public, know not to walk through that area as they could unintentionally alter it. Okay. So when you go in the, into the area, your purpose, your initial purpose is to start to photograph and to start to, to, to basically identify um, and make note of where things are found in their original positions and, and, and spots, areas, where they're located. Yes, ma'am. I want to talk to you now about this case, all right? October 18th of 2015, were you working that day? I was. All right. And did you receive a phone call to uh, go to I-95 and PGA? I did. My, the communications unit typically calls us directly in the office. Mm -hmm. On this case, they, they notified my supervisor, mm -hmm. who was off duty, and she called she called me at approximately 0445 to request that I go out to the scene. Okay, so that would have been, when you say 0445, that's 45 a.m.? A.m., yes, ma'am. Now, 445 a.m. is when you arrive there, um, is it still dark out? Well, I, I, by the time I arrived there, yeah. um, it was approximately 525. Mm -hmm. um, it, was, it was still dark. Um, a lot of the lighting was, was provided by artificial illumination. There were street lamps. There was a DOT truck that had a, a large piece of lighting equipment illuminating okay. um, the shoulder of the road. Okay. All right. When you first got there, CSI Thomas, excuse me, when you first got there, prior to you taking any photographs or anything or picking up any, collecting any evidence or anything, um, do you know whether or not there was a crime scene video done of the area? My, my shift partner, yes. she, she took a video prior to um, sunrise, and I believe she took, a, she took additional video, I believe, after sunrise. And for 
for the members of the jury, what what what, what is a video? What, what, what was the purpose of taking the video of the crimes? Um, similar to the photographs, you can you can relate one item to another to kind of paint that mental picture of of the scene. Um, when you take still photographs, it's one photograph at a time. You might get a couple hundred photos, whereas with video, the video is constantly rolling. You may be you may be taking thirty photographs a second as you progress through the scene, and a lot more can be captured. So you got a lot of fluid movement going when you're when you're doing the video. Yes, ma'am. Now, in this case, were you able to, uh, did you have an opportunity to uh, review or, or view the video of the crime scene that was taken by your colleague? I have not viewed the video. Mm -hmm. um, I was present when she took the video, okay. but I haven't viewed the video itself. Okay, but you were present when she, when she was taking the video of the yes, crime scene? Yes, okay. ma'am. Judge, at this time, I'd like to cue up the video of the crime scene. Okay. Any problem with that, guys? On the defense side? This is the nighttime in, into the day. The eight and two, I think eight minutes and then two minutes, something like that. No objection. All right. And what's the number? Because that's going to be 14. 14. 14 it is. Admitted without objection. at all. Wait till everybody's gathered. And so the video is about to be queued up uh, for the jurors and uh, the, the citizens. I mentioned this earlier. So uh, during the process of the trial, you're going to see some uncomfortable things. And I feel like it's important to tell you a, a little bit of that's going to happen right now. And uh, if any of you feel overcome that you need to leave or whatever, then I just need to get a high sign from you and everybody's got to go out there. And I've already talked to the citizens in the audience about that. So I just feel like it's important to tell you that's coming right now. And um, so I'll keep an eye on you, okay? All right, state, I'm ready for you.
joke that is in is CSI Thomas is that where you you were there when both of those uh, videos were being were made yes ma'am okay judge we would admit those as states uh, 14 and I think I've done so already admitted so now let's talk about uh, CSI Thomas once the video is done and within the video what we were able to see is that there were already cones that were placed down. There were already those little yellow things that you either call placards or stanchions that were placed down, right? Correct. So some of the stuff that you normally do, um, that, that, that you do when you're, you're doing it to uh, preserve the integrity of the evidence, you had already done when that video was, was being made. Some prior to my arrival, um, the larger unnumbered orange cones had already been placed, um, I believe, by members of the uh, Palm, Beach Ga Palm Beach Gardens Police Department. They were the first on the scene. Okay. Um, the, the smaller orange cones with the numbers were placed later, at a later time, and the, the yellow stanchions or placards were placed by me. Okay. I want to show you what is going to be States 15 composite A through C. Judge, I've shown all photos that I have here to defense counsel prior to this. Thank you. Okay. Excellent. Yep. Yeah. Now, do these photos uh, accurately and fairly depict the crime scene that you, uh, where you responded to that night back on October 18, 2015? Yes, they do. So this time, state law has evidence of state's composite 15A through C. Any objection? 15A through C, hereby admitted. Permission to publish, Judge. You may publish. The, the leftmost vehicle near the guardrail would be the SUV um, belonging to um, Mr. Jones. Okay. And I want to ask you, you can, just, can you see this red dot right here that I have? Yes, ma'am. Did you take uh, measurements while you were out at the scene? I, I used a scanner that took, took numerous measurements. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And so now, where we see these two cars, the van and Corey Jones's vehicle, did you take a measurement between, let's say, bumper to bumper? Like this bumper here on the van, and then the bumper on Corey Jones's uh, vehicle. Did you take a measurement of what that distance was? Not the bumpers. You didn't take a measurement of the di of the of the, oh, the, the bumper to but bumper distance. If if I may have a moment, please. Sure. I think the question is: Did you take a measurement of the bumper of one car and how far it was to the bumper of the other car? And maybe. In I don't have an objection to that question, but I have an issue. Okay, come on up. While you're looking, you have a little extra time now. Thank you, sir. Sure. Did you find it, sir? Um, I didn't. Oh. I think I may have phrased it wrong for him, and it's my fault, so I apologize. No problem. So CSI, withdraw that. I withdraw that. So, CSI Thomas, did you take a measurement from tire to tire? Yes, ma'am. Each vehicle? I did. Okay. So you would have taken a measurement from the vans. Well, what, tell us where you took the measurements from. 
I, I have measurements from all four tires of each vehicle mm -hmm. to the each tire. There are eight tires there. From any tire to any other tire, I have a measurement. So this is the tire I'm interested in right here. That would be the right front tire. Okay. And did you take it? Did you take a measurement from that tire, which is the van, the right front tire, to Corey's, Corey Jones's? Uh, Left front. Left front tire. From the right front tire of the white van mm -hmm. to the left front tire of the SUV, mm -hmm. I measured approximately seven feet, five inches. Seven feet, five inches. Thank you. So I'm going to show you what is... From Hold on here, what is now 15B? And that's just another vantage point of the same two vehicles, right? Correct. Just Not shot from a different, different angle. Correct. Both vehicles are in the same position. Same position. Okay. And 15C? Another angle of the same. Okay. All right. Thank you. Now, I want to talk to you about the cones that we see down there. The cones that we see at the, uh, that are placed in the roadway there. It's going to be 16A. I do. Okay. All right. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And if you guys could do me a favor, just lift your voices a little yes, bit for. Okay. okay. Yes, I do. Now, the photographs that I've just shown you, um, do they fairly and accurately represent uh, the scene that you? Uh, saw this as you, as you saw it back on October 18th of 2015. They do with the, with the orange cones having, the large orange cones having yes. been placed prior to my arrival and the yellow stanchions placed by myself. Okay. This time, state would offer into evidence states 16A through E. Okay. Did you say D as in dog? E, I'm sorry. E as in Edward. Any objection? No, Your Honor. Admitted. Actual judge, it's, I'm sorry. Uh oh. Throw in your voice. Okay. Miss Ellis is going to change her mind on the... It's actually right, Judge. I just wanted to make sure I didn't have two together. It's okay. actually right. Through E. A, yes. Permission to publish, Judge? Yes, ma'am. So now what I want to look at here, CSI Thomas, is what we see here are the cones that you were just referring to. Correct. And you said that those cones were there prior to you getting there. Correct. Now, next to the cones, we see what are the little yellow stanchions or placards, right? Correct. Okay. W did you place those down there? Those are the ones that I placed. And what, what does number one, number two, and number three, what do they represent? Casings that were located on the roadway. Okay. And did you take measurements of the casings, the distance that they were uh, from one casing, number one to number two, and number two to number three? I have a measurement from every casing to every other casing. Okay. So can you tell us, um, well, first of all, before we get to the, 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 the measurements of the casings, did you take any sort of measurements from the left rear of Corey Jones's vehicle, which the tire, to casing number one, casing number two, and casing number three. Did you do that? I did. Okay. So why don't we start there? 
with uh, the rear of Corey Jones's vehicle. Okay, with the left rear tire of the gray SUV mm -hmm. to casing number with marked with stanchion number one mm -hmm. would be approximately six feet four inches. Okay. To casing number two from the same tire, approximately 12 feet 10 inches. Okay. From the same tire to casing stanchion number three, 17 feet five inches. Okay. And those, now, go ahead. Those are the three depicted in that photo. I didn't know if you wanted me to continue with. Yeah, just the, just the three that are depicted in, in the uh, photo. Now, can you tell us what the measurements were for uh, casing number one to the casing number two, and then casing number two to casing number three? From from casing number one to casing number two is approximately six feet five inches. From casing number one to casing number three is approximately 11 feet two inches. Okay. All right. I'm going to show you now what is going to be 16B. 16B, we see three more cones and we see three different numbers. Is that right? Correct. Okay. And it starts with number four, five, and ends with six. Correct. Those, those would be the numbers that I placed. Okay. And are, did you place the, the, the little stanchions there also? That's what I'm referring to that I placed. The, the orange cones were in place. I placed the ones with the yellow numbers. Okay. Now, did you take measurements uh, from, the le from the rear of Cora Jones's uh, tire to casings four, five, and six? Yes, I did. Okay. Can you give us those measurements, please? And let's start with number four. From the left rear tire of Mr. Jones' vehicle mm -hmm. to stanchion number four would be approximately 47 feet, 10 inches. Okay. The same tire to casing number five would be approximately 46 feet, 10 inches. Okay. The same casing to stanchion number six would be approximately 53 feet, 11 inches. Okay. Did you take a measurement from casing number three? From casing number three here to casing number, what begins casing number four. Did you take a measurement there? I did. Okay, and what's that measurement? Approximately 34 feet, one inch. And what about... Uh, a measurement from casing number three to casing number five? Approximately 34 feet, seven inches. And what about a measurement for casing number three, from casing number three to casing number six? Approximately 40 feet, nine inches. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to show you what is... This is a different angle uh, showing the entire view of that area. Correct. Is that right? Okay. All right. The, the group of casings near the bottom left of the screen depict casings four, five, and six. Mm -hmm. um, the, the other grouping of three further south near the vehicles Mm -hmm. would be casings one, two, and three. The orange cones that we see in the distance near the left edge of the Im image mm -hmm. are, are not involved. Okay. Our next photo is D. Can you see that okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, in this photograph, my question is, 
what is the, well, first of all, did you take a measurement of that second group of casings, which would be, actually, let's start with the first group of casings, which would be uh, one, two, and three. And you see where that, that pole is right there, that sign? Yes, I do. Did you take any measurements um, from the set of casings one, two, and three to that sign? Yes, I did. Okay. And now, was there something found near the sign? Yes, there was. What, what was found near the sign? A pistol was in the grass at the base of the sign. Okay. And so is, is that, was that the reason you were taking those measurements? That is. Okay. So now let's talk about what the distance was. So let's start with casing number one. Casing number one is uh, right here, right? Yes, ma'am. Did you measure the distance from... Casing number one to that sign. Yes, I did. To that sign, okay. And so the, the, the gun that you're referring to is, and we'll get to a photograph of that, but the gun that you're referring to is lying pretty much like right, in, right next to it. It's very close to the base of the pole of that sign. Okay. So what was that distance, uh, Mr. Thomas? From the first casing to the, to the pistol would be approximately 68 feet, eight inches. Okay. And what about casing two? Approximately 64 feet, nine inches. And three? Approximately 65 feet. All right. And what about the second group of casings? Did you take measurements from those second group of casings to where you located the gun near that sign? Yes, I did. Okay. And what were the measurements? From... Casing number four to the pistol, approximately 37 feet, two inches. Mm -hmm. Casing number five to the pistol, approximately 33 feet, three inches. Okay. Casing number six to the pistol, approximately 31 feet, six inches. Okay. Thank you. And E. I'll show you E. Now, in photograph E... What we're looking at here is this is the rear of of Corey Jones's vehicle. Yes, ma'am. Right. And this sign here. Correct. Did you take a measurement from any of the rear tires of Corey Jones's vehicle to that sign where you located uh, that gun? I did. And what's the measure? Well, first of all, what is your me what is, did you measure the bumper or did you measure a the, tire? I, I measured both tires. Okay. Can you give us the measurements? Yes, ma'am. From the right rear tire to the pistol mm -hmm. is approximately 70 feet, 10 inches. Okay. From the left rear tire to the pistol is approximately 72 feet, six inches. Okay. And so you, so the measurements you just gave us is not, the sign is just kind of a landmark where the gun was located since it was located right next to it. But you actually measure your, your measurement was from the back of those two tires to where that gun was. Correct. show you what is going to be state's 17 composite a through f as in frank Yes, I do. Okay. 
I recognize them all. Okay. What are they pictures of? They are photos of those same casings from both groupings that these photos were taken back at uh, PBSO headquarters. Okay. And do these casings fairly and accurately represent the casings that were out of the scene uh, that you labeled one, two, and three, four, five, and six? They are the same. Judge, at this time, state would offer into evidence uh, state's composite 17A through F, as in Frank. Any objections? Admitted. Permission to publish, Judge? Yes, ma'am. Is, is that yes. that the casing we're talking about there? That would be the casing that had been marked with the yellow placard number one. That's two. Same. Three. Same. Four. Same. Five. Same. And number six. Same. photographs that I just showed you were taken back at, at headquarters, as you mentioned. Um, and for you to have taken them back at headquarters, you had to collect them, right? Correct. Okay. So did you collect those casings out at the scene? I did. Okay. I'm going to show you what is going to be States 18. I do. This is the original packaging that the casings were submitted to the evidence unit in. Okay. And did you did you package those casings in that bag? I did. Okay. And is the bag in the same or substantially the same condition as it was in when you initially packaged it? My my initial seal mm -hmm. is in place and intact. Um, it has been opened at other times and resealed mm -hmm. since since the time I submitted the package. At other times, it would have been opened as. For further examination, the, the firearms unit may want to um, enter it into NIBIN or um, mm -hmm. perform some other processing on it. Okay. So this time, state will offer to evidence states 18. Any objection? No, right. Admitted. And so what's in that bag, are those the same casings that I just showed you, which was states 17? A through F, those casings. That is the bag that I packaged the casings into. Okay. All right. I want to move on to our next group of photos, which is going to be states 19, A through H as in Harry. I recognize that. Okay. Yes. 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 Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Now, the photographs I ju I've just shown you, uh, CSI Thomas, do they fairly and accurately represent? Um, well, first of all, what are they? They are photos of the area where the pistol was discovered near the base of the sign. Um, s multiple pictures of the pistol as it was found, um, a photograph of it after it was um, lifted and laid on its opposite side to see the markings and the position of the safety. And the remaining photos are photos that were taken back at headquarters. Okay. And uh, after looking at these, are they a fair and accurate depiction of uh, what, the, what, the, what, what the gun Yes, there. Judge, at this time, state would offer into evidence states. 
19A through F. Any objection? Admitted. Damien, you're happy. You may publish. So now let's talk about this picture here. Now, this is 19A. Yeah, I'm just going to go in order. So now we're looking at this picture here, CSI Thomas. Now these two cones that we see here, did you, did you place those two cones there? I did not. Those were placed prior to my arrival at the scene. Okay. In between these two cones, what's there? The pistol is there on the ground between them. Look at 19B. Okay. Now that's a, a, a closer-up photograph of that same area, right? Correct. It's a, it is closer and it's at a better angle to see where the gun was in the grass. The same, closer. Okay. And now it's uh, the only part of this gun that you can see out here um, that's is really what you would call the, I guess the handle. The the grips are grip. most apparent in the photo. And the barrel is sort of buried down underneath this vegetation here. Correct. As as that photo as that photo is oriented, the the barrel is pointing toward the left edge of the page. And this is 19D. And now you've placed a placard or a stanchion there um, to note this as number seven. Is that right? Correct. Now the way we see it here, since you've placed your stanchion there. <laughs> Did you move it or touch it at all once you placed your, your stanchion there? In this photo, it had not been moved or touched yet. And it depicts the, the right side of the pistol. Okay. That's just another representation of that, another photo of that same area where you place the, the placard. Correct. Just taking further back to to illustrate the proximity to the guardrail and the street sign. Okay. Now when we look at F, 19F as in right. Now this picture looks different than the other ones that we, we just saw. It is that the, the gun is now resting on its right side with the left side showing up. Mm -hmm. um, one of my assists <coughs> lifted the pistol up and laid it on the opposite side so, side so that we could see that side of the pistol prior to collection. So at this point, it's been manipulated. It's been turned over by one of your crime scene investigators. Correct. Okay. And we can actually... Uh, see it. It's not buried under any vegetation when you laid it down. Correct. Now, this part here, where I have this little red dot, can you see that little red dot, CSI Thomas? I do. Okay. So this part, what is that there? That is the safety of the pistol in the safe <coughs> position. Okay. So when you see the word safe, what is that, when you can see the word safe, what does that mean? It's an, it's an indication that the, the weapon is somewhat less likely to be accidentally discharged. Is it in a safe position? It is in a safe position. And we're going to look at G, 19G. Is that, now, these are the photographs. Now we're looking at the same gun, but taken back at headquarters, right? Correct. Okay. And this is one side of the of this is the other side of the of, of the gun that does not have the safety on it. Correct. Correct. Well, and let me rephrase that: the safety is just not located on that side of the of the gun. Right? Correct. It's downward toward the table. And then we have finally H. That's the other side. That is the other side. Okay, and that's the safety there. Yes, it is. I believe 
we've already marked. It's number one. It's number one. Okay. Do we have a stipulation for this? Okay. Madam Clerk, we have number one? We do? Okay. Thank you. Just shoot. Just take it, set it up on the counter for me. <clears throat> hey, Deputy Dunkley, you've personally cleared that, correct? Okay. I'm going to show you what is marked as states one. That is the box I originally submitted in. Okay. And now is the box, I, mean, I know it's open, but is it in the same or substantially the same position as it would have been when you initially sealed it? Same box. The same box. Uh, my seals are there. They're, they're broken. They are in place. The description that I applied to the box is there, okay. including a, a portion of it that's handwritten and initialed by myself. Okay. And so now what are we looking at in States 1? That is the, the pistol, mm -hmm. the magazine that was contained with the pistol, the, the lock that's been added since just for safety purposes, and the envelope of cartridge cases. Okay. Now, looking at this uh, pistol in here and this secured in here, um, does it appear to be the same firearm? that you located that night at the scene that was marked at Stanchion 7? It appears the same. Okay. Judge, this time, the state will offer into evidence state 1. Any objection? No, no, no. Admitted. And Judge, you know, I, I think I, I may be able to put it on this Elmo. I just want the jury to see it. Let's see if it works. Stick, stick okay. Okay, yeah. And I don't think I told this jury this. At the end of the trial, most of the evidence you're going to be given back in the jury room. So you can look it over the photographs you've all seen on the screen. You're going to be handed those photographs. So you don't have to worry about, oh, you're going to get them. Now, you're not going to get that. But um, if you need to see it, we bring you out here and we, we let you actually hold it. Okay. And state while you're organizing there, we're right at 11.50. Oh, it's 11.51. I'm going to watch it a little fast. Uh, you know what? Let's just break a little early for lunch, and we'll come back early. So if I ask every, uh, the jurors, 105, 105, an hour and 15 minutes or so, make it 110, just so you have the, and w where are my deputies? Yeah, we're going to gather you up. We're going to put you in the jury room. You know the drill. Tomorrow. I buy you lunch, okay? So tomorrow I buy you lunch, and we'll keep you in the jury room, and that way we'll take a shorter lunch. When I bought you lunch, and I know you're back there chatting and eating right here, I'll make them hurry up, and we'll do a shorter lunch so we keep working. And you know, keeping in mind uh, that uh, jurors like to know where we are, the lawyers think we're uh, certainly on schedule, if not ahead of schedule, okay? But we'll keep plugging away. I appreciate your hard work. Don't let me down. Don't talk about the case. Don't do any research. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. So uh, turn your pads upside down, put you in the jury room, and the deputies will take care of you.